Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. Welcome to Friday's, Friday's Corner Bar. Yes, welcome. We're glad you came tonight for pizza, pizza night. night. Friday night. Before we started the show, Friday nights used to always be pizza night. It did, so. especially when the kids were here because we'd make all these individual fun pizzas and everybody could make their own and put their own toppings on it. So. So as always, we love comments. So you know, if you're here, say hello, let us know who's here. And if you have questions or comments, we like to share those with everybody that's watching. It's fun, it makes it interactive. And uh, absolutely, and at yeah. the end of the show, we'll be selling pizza by the slice for two bucks. So. <laughs> okay, Mary Jo is here. Hey, MJ. Hello. How are you doing? Okay. All right. Um, well, I have one pizza in the oven, and uh, what I was going to do is just mention what I'm making. Let me just check this real quick. Okay, so I'm making an Italian sausage with uh, mushrooms, and I sauteed the mushrooms in duck fat, and it's going to have some mozzarella cheese on there. And then um, second pizza that I'll make will be a pancetta with onions, and again, on the onions, I um, uh, caramelize those in duck fat, because duck fat is just such a rich fat, it, it imparts so much flavor. If you've ever cooked with it, you'd know. If you've never tried it, you should. And then I'm gonna make um, kind of a white pizza. It's gonna be pesto with a little olive oil, figs. Um, I thought I had prosciutto, and I didn't. I actually have a hot cup cola. And then the last one is going to be caramelized onions and mushrooms. And um, I have to move my pizza. So what I'm doing is I have it, I have two um, stones in there. I have one on the lower rack right now because I want to get that crust nice and crisp. Now I'm going to slide it up to the, uh, to the top rack so that all the toppings um, get done. And Mary Jo says, I'm coming over. We will have extra, so you are welcome. And she also says, nice apron. Yes, Mike, Mike pulled out his uh, special apron his sister gave him from her, uh, her trip. Yeah, she got this in Florence. So, all right. <laughs> now she's saying, maybe you could deliver them. Uh, <laughs> we don't have one of those little insulated bags yeah. that the pizza guys have. Otherwise, we'd be right over. Honestly, we would. So... So do you want to do what you're doing, or do you want me to start with the cocktail? You um, to... you mind if I do this real quick? And, no. Sure, sure. Um, Where are you going to do it? I can I'll just do it right, right here. So if that's okay, it's going to be a little messy. Um, so I, I made a video earlier today um, on how I um, make my dough and how it all works because I, I put all the um, uh, instructions and ingredients on our website and all that, but I thought it might be helpful. So you can watch it, but. Um, I started with just these little bitty balls and they, they really grew up into nice hunks of dough and I actually posted the risen dough so you can see how much it's risen up. So what I have here is one that I just started to press down. I have some rice flour and uh, so I'm just going to sprinkle a little of that here. Could you check that pizza? Sure. So hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here. I'll slide it back. So basically, I put the rice flour down, and I want to make sure it's on both sides, it's nice and even. And then I'm just going to sort of press it out. And then just give it a little roll. And then you can just kind of gently pull it apart easily. Little twist there, little throw, stretches it out. You can see it's getting a little larger. And these are the size pizzas that we like. And this dough is nice, it's almost opaque. Um, so that's it. It doesn't take very long once you make that dough. And all right, so is this one all done? Yeah. You want all right. Show it on the food can? Yeah, if you don't mind, I'll wipe that up out of your way. That's okay. Okay, I'm gonna show the pizza that he pulled out of the oven on the food cam. So what uh, what flavor is that pizza, babe? Uh, this is Italian, hot Italian sausage. Um, the mushrooms that I sauteed in um, duck, fat. duck fat and just some 
um, mozzarella cheese. So That's my favorite. Pizza. Sausage mushroom is my favorite pizza. So. so this is just a plain one here, nothing. And again, it's a very thin, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's a nice crunchy crust. So we like our pizza crust thin, not as thin as, uh, we, we can't, we can never get them as thin as St. Louis style pizza, but it's, uh, it's nice and thin. So let's see, we have uh, Sandy is here. She goes, she sees Gracie is back. Exactly. I was actually surprised that uh, Gracie showed up for uh, today. And Carolyn says, now Mary Jo knows to get Mike an insulated pizza bag for Christmas. <laughs> and you Mary Jo right. says, Carolyn, good idea. <laughs> Mary Jo, if you leave right now, you can be here by the time this next pizza is done. So. <laughs> and Dory says, yummy, you guys are the bomb. Okay. So now, can I make my first cocktail? Because I've been, you know, it's we're, we're six minutes into the show and I'm, I'm thirsty. So the first cocktail I'm going to make is the Harvey Wallbanger. Now, this is, this is a classic this is an old school classic cocktail. It's from about in the 1960s. I was actually reading, um, reading about the origin of it, and they uh, and they think it's it's a fable. There's uh, not a lot of proof around it, but it was a cocktail that was actually invented in California, and they served it in a surfer community. And there was a surfer named Harvey, and he would drink enough of these that when he get up to leave, he would always bang into the wall. So that's why they are called Harvey Wall Bangers. Harvey Wallbangers actually are, use vodka, and I'm going to use kettle one. Uh, I'm going to use an ounce and a half of kettle one, two and a quarter ounces of fresh orange juice, um, five millimeters or one teaspoon of rich simple syrup. Now, rich simple syrup is two parts sugar to one part water, so it's thicker and richer. And then... The secret ingredients is the Galliano uh, Authentico. Now, I know. Yeah, no, that. I'm not even going to say that again. So, I remember Galliano when I was growing up. Galliano was my grandfather's, uh, my mother's father's favorite after dinner drink. And he had a bottle in the in the dining room that had to have been this tall. I actually wish I had it because it would have been one of those cool, cool, uh, cool ones to, to put candles in. So uh, the Harvey Wallbanger, you know, is actually a really good cocktail, and I think it it's it lost its uh, its popularity mainly because most people don't make it with fresh greens and orange juice, and it's. Uh, it's really good. So now I'm going to make these in highball glasses. And as we talked about one time on the show, a highball glass is actually different than a Collins glass. A highball glass is about nine to 10 ounces and a Collins glass is like 11 to 12. So, um, and I, I, it took me a long time to actually find true highball size glasses. They're actually hard to find. Those most of the sizes that are around now are the, uh, the Collins. If, and if you're going to make it in a Collins glass, you just have to, you know, up the, uh, up the alcohol ratio, the ratios to fill it to the top. So, you, you know, as with any highball, you, we're going to mix it right in the glass. And we fill our glasses to the brim with ice. And we are going to... First, add the liquor. So this is an ounce and a half of vodka in each glass. And then I'm going to give this orange juice a little stir with my handy dandy glass straw. Then we're going to do two and a quarter ounces of the orange juice. Whoops, I might not. Okay. And then we are going to put just a teaspoon of the simple syrup in. The, the simple syrup actually, uh, it kind of 
it's not going to make it too sweet. It's just going to kind of take the bite out of the alcohol a little bit more. So one teaspoon of this, this rich, simple syrup in each glass. Put my spoon over there and it's going to get everything sticky. And we're going to do two dashes of the orange bitters. And then I like my glass straws. I'm just going to use those, give, give it a stir. Ooh, I got the sticky stuff on the side of that glass. Give it a stir. And then we are going to take a half an ounce of the Galliano. And we are going to float that. Sorry, is this, of course, I. And we're going to float that on top. And then after we float this on top, you pour it over a bar spoon if you want, but I just, you know, drizzle it in down into the, into the glass. And then we're gonna garnish this with an orange wheel. And there is your classic Harvey Wallbank. Excellent. Would you like to give it a try? Certainly. Okay. I'm awful thirsty. I'm going to take the straw because I don't like breaking the straws. Oh, cheers. I'm sorry. You want to remake it? Nope. I cheers. Thought, Love you. Love you too. Cheers, cheers everybody. everyone. I squirted mm. it out my mouth. Yeah, I'm thirsty. That's, That's really good. Yeah, so. I think so. That is that is a good uh, a good cocktail. It's a good aperitif. It's good to kind of get your appetite going uh, before the pizza. Yes, it is. So now, are you ready to? Uh, can we get the pizza cam on? Well, I'm just cutting this up, and uh, I should have done this. Typically, he does it in squares. Yeah. Stuff, so. so but. So Sandy has a question. Is Galliano sweet? Galliano is on the sweeter side. It's it's like a it's a kind of a lightly sweet, um, you know, herb, herbaceous liqueur from Italy. There's over thirty herbs and spices in it, and it kind of has a uh, it's kind of on the peppermint side as opposed to a licorice side, but it just kind of has that peppermint flavor to it. Okay. What's okay. Next? Um, so. I've made another pizza here that I, I have one in the oven. So you want to throw that on? Mm -hmm. It's on. Okay. And this um, is pancetta, which is um, pork belly that's uncured. It's not smoked. So it's... Um, Why don't you pull over a little bit to okay. the side so that they can see? So it's uh, pork belly that's not um, smoked like bacon, but it's, it's, a, it's just, I don't know, it's... Uh, it's just really good. I like it. And I have caramelized onions on there. And if you notice, there's a few. Oops, I just turned that off. Um, you notice that sort of yellowish gold. That is uh, Jamaican scotch bonnet pepper. So this is going to be spicy. When this comes out, I'm going to throw some basil, fresh basil on there out of my garden, some cardinal basil. And one of the things I want to mention, I don't know if my, I don't think Mike mentioned it. Before he puts the pizza dough on the peel, he puts a little uh, cornmeal down. So it slides. You can see that it slide around there real easy. So I have one pizza in the oven. I have the pesto in there. So it's on the bottom rack. I'm going to move it to the top, and I'm going to put this one on the bottom. And what happens is it keeps. It gets the crust nice and brown, and then when I slide it to the top, when I slide it to the top, it'll, all the heat in the oven is at the top. And what happens is, is then all your toppings get nice and, and nice and brown and, and sort of gold in there. Um, otherwise, if you put it just at the top, all this will get, the top will get really done and then your crust is sort of doughy or soft. 
And my cross, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm here, I gotta put the piece came in. you can hear it. It's nice and solid. And, uh, you know, it's not wimpy. And well, and the other key to not making it wimpy is what? Too much sauce. You never want to over sauce it. You just want a light, very light thin, thin layer of sauce. That is the that's what makes a soupy pizza. Um, the other thing that he does is he well for the sausage. He actually pre cooks that sausage down because you know you don't want to cook the sausage. And I actually like the chunks of sausage. I don't like the a lot of the bar pizzas around here have that sliced sausage on them, and that's it's not my favorite. Okay, so okay. let's show this next one. Okay. Yep. I know we got we got time here. Um, this one has this is Pull just so um, you like show it sideways. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, so I don't know what the hell this is. Um, <laughs> got, got me moving around. Anyway, so this is just it's just like a white pizza. There's no red sauce on there. This is pesto. Um, I just sprinkled a tiny bit of. Um, mozzarella cheese on there and then these are figs here and then I have some of my um, um, capicola, hot capicola sausage. I was supposed to have prosciutto. I didn't have any. I thought I did and now I'll throw some fresh basil leaves on top of that. I don't usually bake those and then I, I always sprinkle a little olive oil on this because it can be kind of dry with the pesto. So um, this is an awesome pizza though. It's like I think this is Shannon's favorite. That is, yeah. I, love, I do it with the. Um, I love figs. Yeah. And the, uh, and I, I, I actually prefer either the pesto or a white pizza. Sometimes, yeah. And the other thing we love, we also put on a pizza sometimes is salsa. That makes a good spicy base for the pizza. Yes, yeah, salsa, and then you can do some refried beans on top of that. No, no, no. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Don't listen to so, her. She Martin, makes the cocktails. Martin Kale says, ship that pie up to Franklin. Galliano bottle was a coveted empty bottle when I worked at Mary Hardigan's restaurant years back. Yes. It, it says, yeah, it looked like a bottle of artwork. Yeah, my mom had one in her bar, and I have no idea what size it was, but it was, it was like this tall, and it was on a stand, and there was a little tapper or a little uh, nozzle on there. And yeah. It wasn't a big seller, but it was probably back in the mid '60s when they had it. And I think they had it when they sold the bar. Martin says, "I like cheese pizza and uh, cheese pesto basil drizzle." Yes, that is all. Well, you know, honestly, I haven't met a pizza that I don't love. Okay, okay. are you gonna show more, or do you want me to make the? Uh, um, I have. The I can make two more pizzas, but I think you guys kind of have a guess of it. I'm going to make one more with mushrooms and fresh mozzarella. And oh, the fresh sauce. mozzarella, I love that. Yeah, so I'll make one more just to have, and you guys don't need to see me make that. It's not that big of a deal. You know, there's a couple of things. You may want to show them how much sauce you put on them. That's not very much, maybe two tablespoons, honestly. Well, why don't you put the sauce on, and you can come over and interrupt me and show when, you, uh, when you're ready. You don't like me to interrupt you. You can interrupt me anytime, baby. You just don't know what kind of uh, reaction you're going to get. Okay. <laughs> the, the next pizza I'm going to, I mean the next pizza. The you're next making it? Cocktail. All right. I get to make a cocktail. Hopefully you enjoyed your lunch down at Apple Avenue, Martin. The next cocktail I'm going to make is, I'm going to make the ideal martini, but I know there's a lot of folks that watch the show that don't like um, the ideal martini, so I also have a vodka recipe. Um, that I posted on Frizy's Corner Bar if you're interested in that. But I'm going to make the ideal martini. And as if we didn't already have enough gins, we went out and bought another gin because this is the Death & Company ideal um, martini spec. And it calls for Plymouth gin because Plymouth gin has a very citrusy flavor. So it, as always, I had my... Uh, Coupe glasses filled with ice and chilled. You can also use martini glasses, um, but I we don't own martini glasses, just 
coupe glasses. Can I interrupt you? Yes, you may. All right, here's some wait, sauce. Wait, I gotta hide that and show this. Okay. Here's some sauce. So you can see it's not a whole lot. This is an organic sauce um, that we we actually bought it. I've made my own sauce before, and like Shannon said, I've used different salsas and things of that nature. You know, with pizza, you can be really creative, and um, okay, don't be afraid to try it. other things, other toppings, and you know, just um, you can do duck breast on there. You can do grilled chicken. You can do. Um, grilled steak, tons of great ideas out there. So don't be afraid to try something new. And uh, I'm moving this over here. Okay. So the ideal martini, this is a liquor liquor drink. So we're gonna stir it in a mixing glass. And we are, you know, I'm gonna add the ice at the end. So we're gonna start with the Plymouth gin. Now this is not the Navy strength, it's the, uh, um, the regular Plymouth gin. And I'm making two cocktails, so I'm gonna put four ounces in my mixing glass. And then this is an ideal or a perfect, I think we did a show on martinis before. Um, you know, I, there, a martini always has a vermouth unless it's a dirty martini, which it, it substitutes uh, olive brine for the vermouth. But this calls for a perfect martini that has more vermouth, uh, vermouth in it. So this is going to have one ounce of vermouth. A dry martini has a half an ounce of vermouth. So I am going to put two ounces, so one ounce for each cocktail, in. And then we are going to add orange bitters. So I liked the fact that I only had to get one bitters out tonight because both cocktails had orange bitters. And, you know, one dash each, so two dashes. And as I said before, a dash is a, is a good, hard throw. throw. And I'm going to fill my mixing glass full of ice. I should just be dropping the ice in there. And we are going to give this a stir to dilute it. And as I said before, when you stir, you're going to put your spoon in and your spoon with the back to the glass. And it's always going to, that back of that spoon is always going to stay in contact with that glass. And so you're just really moving that ice around so that it melts and dilutes. And the, uh, you know, the once once the ice actually, once the cocktail reaches a certain dilution point, the ice really kind of quits melting. So it's always better to over stir than under stir because you really want that dilution. And you, you know, when you go to pour that cocktail, when you pour it, it will look like a ribbon, you know, it'll flow like a ribbon out of the glass. It won't, you know, it won't flow like your know, water or, or something else. So I'm going to keep stirring. Make it flow, baby. Okay, what do we have here? Uh, Martin says, looks great, Mike and Shannon. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's, this is, uh, I love pizza night because I love eating this pizza. I'm gonna hide this recipe now that you guys have seen this. So you can see Mike, he can stand over here and talk. Okay. Well, I'm pretty shy. Yes, yes you are. Hope everybody had a good week. Okay, I think that is stirred plenty. And we're gonna take our uh, chilled coupe glasses. When you're making two cocktails or, or multiple cocktails, you always wanna kiss the glass because you just kind of want to be able to walk where it meets. Just walk it back and walk that cocktail back and forth so you can kind of make sure you get a good even pour. That's the big thing around the Friday's household is that, you know, our pours have to be even. Yes. When we pour, Mike, Mike is such a fanatic about even pours. A lot of times when he pours a good bottle of wine, he sets it on a scale to make it weighs, weighs it on a scale. No, that's it. you yeah, that does yeah, that. Yeah. Don't be making up stuff. No, 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 no. I've never I, done that in my life. This is garnished with a lemon twist. So, you know, you want to squirt that uh, lemon essence in the cocktail. That's, you know, so the bigger the swath, the better the, uh, 
the taste. And then here are your ideal martinis using the Death and Company uh, martini recipe. Okay, baby, you ready to try? try this yes. One? I think everything's okay over there. Cheers. Cheers. I Love you. Is there any, Cheers, any smoke? Thing? You guys, once there's smoke back there, like there was last week, you have to give us a warning. Yeah, please do. Give us a yell out because they got pretty smoky in here. So Betty Brown says, thank you, Mike and Shannon. Off to find a Harvey. <laughs> well, Harvey was my grandfather's name, which was one of the reasons why I, I really, I had never had a Harvey Wallbanger, honestly. This is my very first one. I had Shannon, I'd never had one. I, I had never had one. And I had bought Galliano a few weeks ago because, you know, I it just reminded me of my grandfather. And I was like, you know, I need to, I need to get Galliano and just try a couple of Galliano cocktails. And we tried a few cocktails this week and none of them were winners. None of them were. Uh, no winner, of, winner. No <laughs> winner, winners. So. But uh, um, but this one, I thought, you know, my other grandfather's name is Harvey, so I'm gonna make a Harvey Wallbanger in honor of my two grandfathers. So that is why we featured that cocktail tonight. Okay, okay um, Shannon had mentioned something about some wine, so you know. Because wine, honestly, wine is the best thing for to pizza. serve. Wine definitely goes with. Um, pizza or pizza goes with wine, however you want to look at it. Not so much with cocktails, I don't think. But so you can do. Um, I'm going to show you some that we really enjoy and like. That's and an I, awful lot. It is okay. We, we, we have like a two minutes. minutes. Okay, so Just I'm going to do your a favorites. <laughs> they're all my favorites. That's why they're here. So um, should I turn the camera? No, I don't know. Um, okay. I don't know if you can see it. So I. So here's an Italian wine that is really nice. It's a reserve. Yeah, you can. You okay. can I think I put it up high. All right. So this is a nice Italian red. It's a uh, Sangiovese, 100%, I believe. This that this wine would go very well. This one would. Yes. I prefer red with my pizza. So do I. Okay. This Pinot Noir um, from, Scout, just a touch. from yeah. Scout and Cellar. If you're interested in that, let me know. I can get you information on it because you can't buy it at the store. This is a really nice Pinot. It's a nice light body wine. This is a very much more of a heavy wine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is Chateau Neuf du Papa, which is House of the New Pope. This is an awesome wine. You want to open this? It's about. really good. Super good. Very. I don't. I don't. Well, what's the going price to. point on that one? This one's about. Um, well, I bought. bought Whole bunch of them, so it was like thirty-seven dollars. It was a special deal, probably around forty bucks. But you want to open this about three hours, four hours before you open it. I've opened it as early as nine o'clock in the morning, had it that evening, and it is it is amazing. It honestly, is. Um, so so we like to have you know higher end bottles of wine with our you know our ten dollar pizza. It's, uh, well, you think about it, when you go out to eat, and if you go out to get pizza and you, you order a bottle of wine, you're going to spend probably 20 or, you're probably going to spend 20 or 30 bucks on that wine. And if you went to the store, it was probably an 8 or $9 bottle of wine. Usually they mark them up two to three times, whatever the retail price is. So our theory is, is I'd rather buy a really good bottle of wine, make a $10 pizza, and... If I'm going to well, spend not it. even a ten dollar pizza. It's, I don't know. We have to cost it out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, check that pizza. Um, so basically, I would rather have a really good bottle of wine at home and spend thirty or forty bucks versus go out and get a thirty or forty dollar bottle of wine that's really like nine or ten dollars. So our other red. I don't know if you guys can see this. This is a Cane Vineyard. This is a Cane Cuvée. This is an NV sixteen. This is our favorite wine, red wine. We, we, we own a lot of the canes. They make three varietals. This is their lower end. This is about $37. So for whites, this is the Shannon's favorite. This is a, it's a white burgundy. It's a Chardonnay. It's French. Um, oh, Fousset. Yes, we call it a different name when we buy it. But anyway, this is an awesome wine. This is a 2020. This is also a Scout and Cellar. This is one that I really like. Um, I think that is Heart, Soul, and 
sun or something. I forget. I, I'm not good with French. This is a nice Chardonnay. And then this is Shannon, as well as my favorite. This is a Vouver, Vouverette. Vouverette. From Vouverette. And we love this wine. I just picked this, or you actually picked this up a couple weeks ago. So. Hi, Mr. Fred Cam. You come over. Okay. So buy good wines if you're going to make pizza at home. Makes the whole experience better. Um, don't over sauce it. If you have questions, post them on our site and we'll get back to you in terms of how to make the pizza. Um, mm -hmm. So, a couple of did, um, Pizza Stone, a must have. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I on, on the recipe down in the comments section, I posted the link to a couple of different pizza stones that you can look at. Um, both of the ones that I posted were the stones that we have. You'll, you also need to have a peel. Which we got those from what, Ocean State Job Lot for like six dollars. Well, I don't know uh, where. Well, this the tag came. Came, the tag six ninety nine. Ocean State Job Lot six ninety nine, and we've had that for a long time. However, uh, this one here, this one here, we've had for close to thirty years. Um, some friends of ours gave us this and that pizza cutter that I was using, and this pizza peel has seen. Okay, now we're gonna wrap it up. We're over thirty minutes. Okay. Well, we're gonna wrap we, it up. Wrap we it, really wrap tried hard to keep it under to keep it to twenty, but we keep getting longer she just and talks longer. And talks yeah. and talks. Yeah. Six wines. So. <laughs> so next week, no cocktails. It's just gonna be me with wine and cooking. And I will say, this ideal martini is extremely tasty. So uh, thank you, everybody. As always, if you like our show, like, comment, share it with friends. Absolutely. And, uh, We're trying to grow our audience. And um, if you can just share it with one of your friends or one of your groups, that would be awesome. And we just do this for fun. Yeah, and, I just noticed your head's cut off. It was better uh, when you were sitting down. I thought so. my head was. Okay. Right. <laughs> anyway, so we just do it for fun. And uh, Good night, everybody. Blah, 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 blah.